Tonight's episode is about Heather. Heather doesn't have a last name, I guess, at least they don't mention it, but she is a new ager that uh, a vlogger is going to see and talk about, but we're gonna get further than that blog. We're gonna go into her past, into understanding from her own lips what's happening before this whole event happened to try to capture exactly what's going on in this strange life that we live in. Now check this out. I've been wanting to meet Heather Activation Vibration for three years, I think. She has a place here in California. She claims to speak alien language. People call it light codes or light language. Okay, so number one, what is up with the seductive light language? <laughs> Does it have to sound like that with that in the background, or or is this part of the whole whole digs? I I don't really know if she's speaking some kind of weird gibberish or she's uh, being channeled by some demon spirit here, but um, she definitely has a, uh, a charis charismatic uh, personality that uh, helps contribute to this, and it's all from her background. We're gonna we're gonna uh, dig deeper into that in a moment. But I want to explain one thing here. The Bible says that without an interpreter, this speaking in tongues, it's, it's, it's just gibberish. It's nothing. This is not the working of the Holy Spirit. You, you don't just spout out gibberish. This actually happens in churches often too. Worship the Lord. Just like what she's going to do throughout this whole thing is talk in this gibberish language and then attempt to interpret it through her own words. Let's continue. In the spiritual world, there are people who claim that they can connect with different extraterrestrial beings, speak light language. But they're not in the spiritual world, they're in the physical world. So how can they be in the, the spiritual world if they're in the physical world? Whatever. They actually feel that they've come to Earth from another part of the galaxy. I 100% okay. believe in aliens at this point. I'm hoping that after spending the day with her, I'll have a better idea if maybe there is something to this alien language she's speaking, or maybe my meters okay, will detect so if it's completely a scam. But if anyone would be able to it's do this, it would be her. Yeah. I've been feeling you like you've been coming through the realms recently. What does that mean, coming through the realms? Like you've been appearing in different what realities, your name. This, that, ideas, yes, okay. Yeah, I feel her. What are we doing? We're just gonna allow for whatever is to flow to flow through. Oh. Oh, Buddha. Or whatever that was. Uh, you want to give more us a idols. Tour? Sure, more yeah. pictures of idols. There's different crystals okay. actually aligned oh. throughout the place, all set with intention to like hold yeah. a specific frequency. Totally so that you new feel age. good, so that you feel nourished, so that you feel loved. Nourished? Nourished? Welcome. Can we talk about this beautiful altar over yes. here? Yes. We have a bunch of different things. Well, another that altar are to another god. Representative and like symbolic of certain ah. frequencies to invoke certain energies. Let's see the rest of the beautiful what? portal. So, welcome to the garden. These are oranges. What do you eat? Only breath and magic. I mean, you're not actually breath. No, I'm not actually. Uh -huh. I know that's a real thing, though. I haven't eaten meat okay. in 11 years, actually, until I just did ayahuasca two weeks ago. And I had this whole thing come through where it was like, I partly identify with the fact that I've been vegan, that I haven't eaten meat for over 11 years, and I'm like, I need to dissolve that ego. I want to sit down and really... Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's hold it right there. <laughs> why, why are the New Age movement... Uh, attaching themselves to vegan vegetarians. Who who cares if you don't eat meat? Let me explain that real real, real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna diminish that thought for a second because what I mean by that is, why are you bringing that out as part of the New Age movement? Let me tell you something about myself. I grew up vegetarian. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't tell people that because uh, just out of the blue to talk about it. But it, in fact, it, since it came up in this episode, is the only reason I mention it. This is not necessarily just because uh, of some realization I had from the New Age movement, but it's just because I believe it's a healthier lifestyle. In fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger does it, Bill Clinton does it. There's, there's a number of people that 
see it as a, a lower cholesterol diet will make you live longer, up to 10 years longer. If you're interested in this aspect of things, look up the uh, the Blue Zones, I think it's called. It was actually a, an episode on Oprah. You can find it on YouTube. But that's not what this episode is about. Let's continue on. I just think it's, it's strange that this New Age movement has attached itself to a healthier lifestyle through vegetarianism or veganism by not eating meat. And it has nothing to do with the spirits. Anyway, let's continue. Let's do it. So let's go back to the altar and let's like sit. Okay. It's called a hand it's drum. A hand pen, but hand it's a space drum. It's it is a UFO. A, it's actually a space drum. In your lap. <laughs> that plays sound frequencies that are like cosmic binaural beat sound frequencies that register to certain parts of your brain and activate certain awarenesses what? and consciousnesses and abilities to feel. Same thing as light language. I don't understand. It's okay, you what? don't have to. I don't it. understand when either. you channel light My soul language. gets it? You do a specific breathing to get into it? Yes. Usually different every time, but it does require centering my energy so that I can open up and channel. Are you going to be able to show us? What, 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 what did she just say? It requires me centering my energy so I can open up a, a channel? What does that even mean? Yes, absolutely. I would love to co-create a space, a container to where you feel comfortable. And if you feel cold, to allow your soul to speak your own version of light language as well. I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'm so open. The human doesn't need to know. The soul will get it. People who are speaking light language... Okay, okay, okay. Let me separate two things right here. Primarily, it is this New Age movement, this movement that believes in alien abductions, alien uh, uh, introductions that believes there is a separate entity inhabiting our bodies. This is 100% not true. 100% not true. We are made in the image of God. There is not some physical manifestation that comes out of our bodies and leaves and goes somewhere. The Bible says when we die, when we die, our soul knows nothing, nothing. We're dead. We're literally dead. If you want to know more information about this, I talk a little bit about it a little bit more in the uh, movie called Starfall. It's on this channel. It's the one that has received the most views on this channel. It's a documentary talking about the strange events that happen in this life about UAPs. Go watch that. But without, but let's continue and, and watch a little bit more about this. They could just completely be making this up. Totally. It could be totally fake to some uh -huh. people, but I can't deny it. I need Why? to have multiple proven facts, experiences in order to- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you hear what she said there? She needs to have multiple proven facts, experiences. So is she factualizing these experiences? A lot of times what people do is they take their experience and they make that experience the fact. That's what it's gonna come down to in the last days. Do we believe our experiences? Do we believe our senses? Or do we believe what we have studied? What we have learned from the Bible principles? That is primarily what she's confusing here. I have had experiences. Yeah, she probably have. She probably has had experiences from these demonic entities, these spirits that and the Bible says, test all the spirits according to the word of God. So what she's experiencing has made it her fact. And that is where I draw the line. That is where it's dangerous. Let's continue. They claim something as tangible or real. There have been so many forms of confirmation for me connecting with ETs. I don't deny this. It would be inauthentic for me to deny it. I would literally be holding the biggest part of my experience back and suppressing that. Talk me through your experience <laughs> yes. of connecting with extraterrestrials? I'd say over the past like eight years really, I've been connecting with cosmic beings, ETs specifically. A few years ago, I was completely sober, laying in my bed, and I felt called to meditate. And as I was meditating, these three light beings appeared on each side of my bed, like kind of what you would think an alien would look like, where they were really tall, their heads were different shapes, and their arms and their legs were more lengthy, and they had maybe about three or four fingers, I couldn't fully see, but they weren't physical form, they were emanations of light. I woke but you up were next. awake. I was awake. I was not sleeping, I wasn't in a dream, and they lifted out my light body so I could see it, almost to show my... Okay, so let's pause right there for a second. We know for a fact that 
when people have these manifestations, these these abduction experiences, that they never come back with any knobs on the from the aircraft. They never come back with you know the the cosmic toilet paper stuck to their 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 shoe. There have been events where people have said they've had uh, markings on their bodies, or they hey they they've had something put into them, but it's not. It's never enough to say, okay, are you sure that wasn't already there? Or, or is no, it's, it's hard to prove. Number two, though, we have also had beings that have had former dead relatives come back to them and they said they felt their breath, they felt their, their body heat, they felt their heartbeat, they felt all these things on them that make it a physical and real experience. And they didn't take him anywhere this time, but they, they, they knew this was a real physical experience. And I believe, just through un- my understanding of what's happening here, th- that these things can happen either way. You can have a, they can in- induce a vision, or you can, they can appear to you as a physical being. And that's where it becomes real scary, folks. Because when, when, the, when the experience crosses over the line from, a regular, possibly was that a dream to, well, this is my reality, and the physics of my reality is being questioned. That's when you have to say, what does the Bible say about this? Let's continue. We'll get into that in a second. Also show my human. This like spiritual body of mine, this aura, this energy that we all talk about, it's real. The next morning, I started thinking about Arcturians. Arcturians, what are Arcturians? So the name uh, Arcturians just came Came through, fully, fully came through. I had not heard of them before. And they are the energetic consciousness that I connect to and channel and communicate. Getting into the information. For some people watching this, they may be like, what, these girls are batshit crazy. Yeah, (laughs) full on. That happens all the time. And it's totally fine, like I totally get it. Because if I weren't experiencing this reality, it would seem insane to me. It's so real and so undeniable for me that I don't really mind what other people think or Okay, so she doesn't mind what other people think because what her experience has told her has defined her reality. From what we understand, if the spirits can manipulate our experience, that will change the facts. Make You've heard of alternative facts. That's where this, these are the ultimate alternative facts. When your experience becomes similar to someone else's, that experience the exact same thing through this stuff, all of a sudden you have a collective, a hive mind, almost a new religion. And a lot of people, this is what's going to break upon the world. All of a sudden, tons of people are going to experience something like this. But it's not going to be as weird as this. This is just a precursor to what's happening. They feel. I want to talk about the talking to aliens. Yes. Yeah. There's a specific energy in essence, a transmission that's coming through the light language, but it's not specific words. You wouldn't be able to translate this word means this word means this word. When you're speaking this language, do you know what you're saying? Yes. It's happened multiple times actually where I've used light language in challenging situation and it was like dos. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. There's, there's a variety of people that watch this show from around the world. They've, they've emailed me. If anybody recognizes any words in that, can you please leave a comment? That was really strange. And I, I believe that she is probably making stuff up, but it's it's pretty convincing because it's the flow is so good. It doesn't even I haven't even seen uh, certain churches that have this speaking in tongues. You've heard of this. I, it, it, it sounds better than that even. <laughs> so I, I, I wonder if this is not being channeled specifically through a demonic spirit to say something maybe that shouldn't be said. We got to be really careful about that, folks. We could be blaspheming the Lord in another language and thinking we're doing good if we're saying some random gobbledygook out of our mouth. <laughs> what you just spoke, it's so powerful. What was, what was I saying? The message. It is not just this girl that sits back. I am a temple of energies of gods and goddesses streaming through to teach you a message. So it wasn't even about me. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. She's a temple of gods and goddesses. Think about what that's saying. That's the original lie. Satan cave came to, to uh, Eve through a snake and said, 
you will not surely die. You will be as gods, as gods, as gods. Now, number two, there, there's two lies in there. Number one, you will be as gods, but number two, you will not surely die. Everyone everywhere is teaching that this soul, this thing comes out of our body and it floats in the air when we die, that we are that thing and that we don't surely die. This is the original lie. And this is the original lie that will be portrayed at the end and will take the world by storm because they think that you will not surely die. You will continue to live forever and ever and ever and just waiting for, I don't know, the second coming. You know, what's, what's fascinating about that is a lot of even Christians have fallen into this, this, this paradigm where you believe that you will be in heaven and then what is, what is the point of Christ's return to come get nothing on earth? And, and if, if my grandmother is up there watching me, do I really want her seeing all the terrible things that I've done here on earth or all the mistakes that I didn't even see I was going to make? I mean, that must be living hell for her if she is floating somewhere around or in heaven somewhere. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any logical sense. It's not biblical. The Bible says the dead know nothing. The Job says that the, the, the person that dies does not come back to his house. It, the, the, the Bible says they are in the grave awaiting the resurrection, dead, asleep. Christ himself said the dead was asleep. Asleep. Lazarus. Think about Lazarus for a second. Lazarus was the good friend of Jesus while he was on earth. And he said, he said, Lazarus is dead, he told the disciples. But he said, Lazarus is asleep in death. So when Lazarus was resurrected by Christ, after Christ was so sad that he died, he resurrected him. Don't you think Lazarus was like, oh man, you know, I was in heaven waiting for that. Or I was in, uh, some religions believe, a uh, purgatory or some in-between place, which I don't even know how they get that point. But but don't you think he would be upset that Christ ripped him out to be back on this terrible planet? <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's the, the message that the Bible says at all. I believe that when you're dead, you're dead. And the reason why the Bible uh, talks about us going straight to the Lord, or it appears that way through some verbiage in the New Testament, is because as soon as we are asleep, and we wake up, the next next feeling, the next understanding, the next sight will be our time with the Lord. And that's what we don't understand, just like asleep. When you go to sleep, you wake up, do you remember all that time in between? No, no. So what the big deception is, is the exact same one from the very beginning of time where, where, where God, uh, Satan said, you will not surely die. You will not surely die. You will be as gods. Mm. But I also use light language to activate high frequencies of bliss and happiness. And that's what I do through my songs. It's the galactic connection and channel that has been able to reach those who resonate and people who are ready to like tap into this higher frequency awareness. Do you believe you're an alien? Definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure am. Have they told you? That was, that was for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And that was, that was, that was five assures. So, um you know it's it's true I told you about what's going on in the worlds currently i do get confirmation that by 2024 there will be a physical landing where it is known by the mainstream that aliens exist so then That's... the next <laughs> what what wait what at, by what? 2024 there will be a physical landing where it is known by the mainstream that aliens exist. So okay. Then the next so, so think about this for a second. 2024 is right around the corner. If this is true, we got a lot of preparation to do. But you got to take into account that you got demons trying to prove prophecy. And <laughs> they don't know the future. They may live a little longer than us, but they don't know what's really happening. They're not omniscient. So... If they could have told this woman, hey, yeah, we're going to land in 2024, uh, that might not be true. But I wouldn't put it past the devil to do some pretty incredible things. In fact, I believe these pretty incredible things will happen in our lifetime. But I'm not setting any dates on this. Let's continue. 
two years. Soon. Yeah, it's really soon. That's in two years. Yes. My mind is in a pretzel almost, but... <laughs> yeah, maybe you literally want to stop using human words and you want to speak light language. Yeah. So first we're going to be crystal portaling okay. you. Setting these crystals with divine intention. Crystals? What? Fully what is crystals do? Fully relaxing your nervous system. It's going to take you on a little journey of sound. More light language, I suppose. I felt like this grandfather cosmic energy. Well, there's been lots, lots going on with my grandfather. And is he still on Earth, or? No, he died. Well, he's definitely. Okay, okay. You see her. You see her words there. Is he still on Earth? Isn't it interesting how 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 this this uh, new age movement, this this movement that believes in these extraterrestrials, also believes. Similarly, that you can be apart from the body, separate. Fascinating stuff. This deception's wild. Definitely one of your guides. Absolutely. Yeah. You are like this cosmic granddaughter of like a specific mission. So well, with light language, it just comes naturally. It's just you allowing yourself, giving yourself your soul permission to make sounds, to be audible, to hear and feel vibration through your expression of whatever wants to come through. I like want to believe this is real, mm -hmm. but then the human part of me is questioning it still. Stay skeptical. Which is natural and normal, and that's a part of the fun, where it's like we forget so that we can remember. My fear is that what? I'm just going to make things up. At first, it may feel like that, but you have to give yourself permission because that's still the ego doubting. I'm going to be speaking to you as well. It'll be a conversation. Okay, so like bringing your energy into our hands, and let's activate the energy. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it right here. What she's about to do is she's about to try to speak this light language. It's basically being strangely possessed. And uh, for the uh, average viewer, I gotta tell you, this is strange. I cut out probably a good chunk of this stuff, the majority of it, because it was just too weird for me to watch. And um, I, I included just bits and pieces, and I cut it up a little bit because um, there was there was some strange things that happened. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going and watching the whole thing. It's just too weird. But uh, you're going to see the most relevant clips in this uh, highlights reel. Holding it to your heart. And with this, opening up the gateway, the portal to your soul's language. So we're just going to be like kind of moving the torso. Desikiyash asanfo. Okay, like I said, th there was a lot more to that, and she got a lot more involved. But but let me let me tell you, is that the movement of the spirit? Is that the movement of the of the Holy Spirit of God to make you do all these kinds of things, all these kinds of motion, commotion, even flop around on the floor, and do all this stuff and, and, and almost throw up? The Bible says that God is not the God of disorder. He is not the God of chaos. This is chaos. It's absolutely nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it feels weird to say human uh, words after. Yeah, what? <laughs> oh my God. I don't know how to explain, yeah. but I, it feels, I have a full, like, healing. Yes, a full opening, a full clearage from your throat, from your expression, from speaking your truth. Yeah, I was coughing up energy blockages. Blockages. Energy yeah. blockages? My voice feels clear. Yes. I yeah. feel my voice feels different. Yes, stronger. <gasps> yes. Your voice. It, it's clear she had a real experience here. And this experience wasn't something that she just conjured up in her mind. I, I, I would be scared to death, honestly, if something like that happened to me. I, I don't think that anything that she experienced was just you know put on for the show. She was clearly uh, not sure she, she could go through with this. She was clearly uh, um, very uh, not 
not sure this was real. And then all of a sudden this happened to her and now she's had an experience that for, will forever change her life and perhaps forever change her uh, understanding of what she believes is truth. Voice trust trust you more. You trust, trust your voice how, how more. Do you, Keep doing it whenever you feel called to. Again, like it is the best way to openly be able to express and purge any type of energy or emotion. Nothing can get it out like light language can. Your, your like cosmic awesome. self is literally my best friend. <laughs> I feel like you could know what I was saying. Fully yes really? the whole yeah. time. <laughs> okay, okay. Listen to what she said. I fully understand what she, you're saying. Fully yes the whole time. And then manipulation, she goes in and asks her, what does that mean to you? So instead of the girl in orange coming back and saying, well, what, what did I say? She, the Heather, the one that uh, believes that she heard exactly what she said, is asking her what she believes she had said so that she doesn't have to explain or interpret it for her because they both have no idea what they're talking about. At one point, I just felt like I was claiming my realm. Like, this is my space to express. This is where I do what I do. This is where I am who I am. It does not concern me what yeah. people are going to think about it. Yeah. Really proud of you. You're amazing. So yeah. magical. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> and the adventure continues. <laughs> this stuff is so strange. This is exactly what is, is, is wrong with the New Age movement. And isn't it interesting that these ETs and New Age go so close hand in hand together? This is the demonic movement. This is the religion of demons that is beside the religion of God. Because Satan always likes to have a counterfeit of what is God's. What's even fascinating though, even more fascinating though, is how did this person get, in, get involved like this? What, what, what in the world happened to, to make this woman think that, hey, you know, I need to get so deep into the realm of New Age to, to make this stuff up? Check this out. I dug a little deeper. Heather says this behavior is, well, she just says it's nothing new. This is Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, it turns out, had Heather and her mother on the show to discuss what's going on in their life completely unrelated to, to, uh, to Heather's experience with the New Age because this episode was recorded way before she got involved in the New Age. This episode was recorded when she was still a teenager. Damage that looks just like the damage from the plane of Flight 261 has been found on the same kind of parts in two more Alaska md 8 it's embarrassing, ridiculous, because of my drinking. I've gone from leading national network investigative reporter. We hid two video cameras in our vehicle. To no job and sleeping in a bush. In 2001, paid cash, $1.2 million for an incredible house on the water. Right now I have probably $300 to my name. A lot of my financial problems were because I was out of it on drugs or alcohol. In January of 2013, I remember having no car, no money, totally depressed, disconnected from my daughters, and almost having $50 only, and didn't want to spend it on a motel. I remember walking behind a fast food restaurant and bushes this high and sleeping under the bush. After my car accident in 2010, I was taking three or four oxycodone a day. I started drinking alcohol to go to bed. When I went into rehab, my daughter Heather turned on me. Heather exaggerated my addiction, smeared my character. I would walk into my mom's room and she'd be passed out on the bed and there would be empty bottles of vodka lining the room. I'm a, not a drunk, but right now, including having drank this morning, I drink three nights a week and I'll drink like up to a bottle of wine to go to sleep. The Ooh. reason I drank is loneliness, but mostly heartbreak. I know if I had the love of my daughters, I could not drink, but it's because there's such deep love between my daughters and me severed that I drink so much. Now, let me stop it right there because this has turned into a strange episode because you're thinking, how did you go from new age to a drinking mother? This is where the rubber meets the road, folks, because this is what's happened. 
This woman, her mother, Heather's mother, we're going to see them talk in a minute, went to Dr. Phil because her mother had a drinking problem. Her mother was a very successful woman at one time. But that success is going to fail if you become a drunk. The Bible says that we shouldn't become a drunk. In fact, the Bible says we are a, a, a group of people that should tell more about the Lord. Priests of our own household. And those priests, it says in the Bible, the original laws says, don't drink. Don't be one a drunkard. Don't, don't take this substance because this substance will cause you to allow you to have these demon spirits enter into your mind. Why do you think they call it spirits? They call alcohol spirits. In fact, you can go to some stores and it still says instead of alcohol, it says spirits. Do you want to ingest spirits? Now, literally, you're not ingesting spirits into your body when you inject alcohol, but you might as well be because when you're in, you inhibit the frontal lobe of the brain or with any drug, not just with alcohol, but with any drug, it will cause you to be inebriated to the point where you can't stop these things from entering. Do you think if you're inhibited from driving down the road, even from walking, or even if you black out, do you think you can stop the spirits from coming into your mind, grabbing a hold of you? They aren't gonna do it uh, explicitly, but they will influence you much easier when you have these spirits, these alcohol in you. And this is what's happening to her mother. <clears throat> it's causing her to, to lose track of what's going on in her life. And it's causing her, her, her daughters to say, you know what? I got to change my life. I got to do something different than my mom did. Let's look at the most, the, the most new age, the most, those other religious properties that uh, we can look at. Let's go to the, 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 the spirits that I know about in my area. They're in, currently in California. Fascinating stuff. Okay, have you been drinking today? This morning. Uh, how much did you drink today? I last night um, ordered a vodka and cranberry at like 10 o'clock and uh -huh. kept it till this morning. And at 4.33, I drank it. Okay, because you were starting to withdraw? Yeah, I have shakes. Then you're drinking a lot. In the last two weeks since this happened, I've, I, drink, I drink now more than I have ever. Okay. It does seem to have kind of taken over your life. Oh, I get it. Christy hasn't seen her daughters in more than two years. Her oldest daughter, Heather, is here. We're going to find out what she has to say when we come back. But I was a really good mom. I don't doubt that at all. I'm not saying, oh, please bless me at all. I'm saying it took something pretty severe to make me get so And are, you, are you still trying to blame that on me? No, it's no. Not. Well, some of this stuff, like that, Heather, I never opened accounts in your name. Comcast and pg &E, please tell me. Are you serious? Absolutely, those. OK, wait, those but are accounts. But I heard that you thought I opened credit. <laughs> Back so she's said, ruined your credit. Oh, ter ruined, oh terrible. I I've can never buy a car or anything. Because when I was 16 years old, I'm like, I got in debt so much. I can't ever. For accounts you didn't even know had been opened. No. And they say the only way I can do it is if I sue her. And like that's like the last thing that I'm like trying to do is go to court with her. You know what? I understand that you lived in mansions and you bought them for millions of dollars. And you did this and you did that. And that you were a big television personality and all that. You know what? I've been doing this for 35 years, and it all comes down to the same thing. A drunk's a drunk, and mm. if you're a drunk, you're a drunk, and you got to own it and stop all the pretentiousness. Hell, you even pretentiously kill yourself. You call your daughter, she answers, you say, hang up, don't answer when I call back because I need to leave a suicide message. <laughs> Take a look at this tape. So... <laughs> I understand people have mental problems. I understand people have, have issues and they have drama that happens in their life and it causes them to not want to continue. But this is a selfish motive. This, if you are thinking about this, if this is something that crosses your mind, you need to, you need to say, wait a second here, I need to go get help. Because the most selfish thing you can do is to make others grieve for you. Others that have provided the most for you, that have, that have tried to help you the most. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against these things that are ourselves. It's not our mental that we're wrestling against. It's not someone else's 
uh, problems that we're wrestling against. It's not like, oh, I have someone that has done better than me and so it makes me feel bad so I want to kill myself. What's going on here is you're wrestling against demonic spirits that have inhabited your body that are saying, I will do this and you don't, you don't fit in and you're a terrible person. Because that's how Satan operates. That's how the devil works. He goes, he goes, I want you to do this terrible thing. And then once you do it, he says, you are an awful person. You're a terrible person for doing that. How demonic is that? How terrible is that? But the way to stop this is to stop drinking alcohol. Because alcohol will only continue the role in your life that causes absolute grief. One day when I was sleeping, my mom called my phone and I answered and I was still half asleep and she told me to not answer the next time she called because she was going to leave a voicemail. Okay. And I just hung up. And the minute I listened to it, I just like broke down. On the day before we're going to be evicted again, I got up in the morning, went to a Walgreens, got a bottle of vodka, put it in my trunk, called Haley, left her a voicemail and said, the sheriff's coming, I cannot bear to tell you, and I'm such a failure and loser, and I'm so sorry, and let her feel like I was gonna go kill myself. Mm. She told me, this is the last time that you're gonna hear from me. Like, I lost it. I couldn't even get off the floor. My mom just killed herself. I drove in my Mercedes with vodka in the trunk and saw a place in a vineyard that I could get through two steel pillars. Floored it. Both sides of my Mercedes burst in. When I quickly turned around and, and drove up to the hill, a woman saw me and called police. The police said that they found a car crashed on the side of the road with empty bottles of vodka and a new in it. After the police told us that they found her car and her body was missing and after the suicide goodbyes, I did think that she was dead that night. About four months later, I got a call from an insane asylum in North Carolina. When I realized that my mom had faked the suicide, I told the asylum not to contact me again. After the suicide and even up until now, my mom says, I tried to kill myself because of you, Heather. Well, I don't know where the fake thing came because the truth is the only reason I say Mercedes, who cares about the car, is it's Apparently so you do. No, I got in my Mercedes and went to so the strong. vineyard to end my <laughs> life. Oh, Lord, give me a break. That's honestly not what I meant. Mercedes are strong, and I burst them in, the, the walls, but I hear you. Who does that to their daughter? Exactly. Every day, I don't know if you're alive or dead. I'm like, I think, I th I think she is actually dead. Uh, uh, the like past few months. Which because one of you gets up and checks the obituaries? You do it every day? You uh, check the obituaries on a regular her, basis? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I'm willing to do here. I have contacted the Origins Recovery Center on South Padre Island in Texas. I believe that Hannah's house there, which is a treatment center for women, is the premier dual diagnosis treatment center in, in the country. It's an intensive inpatient treatment program that takes a multidisciplinary approach to getting people healthy. And they're gonna start by doing everything from brain scans to hormonal scans to blood wow. work, to everything to find out where you really are, to truly give you a chance to get yourself straight one time in your life. And I don't know how long you're going to be there. It ain't some 30-day snap-your-fingers wonder because they work the criteria until you, honest to God, are a functioning member of society again. Good. Thank you. And, and at some point, you guys will have to plug into that process down the line. And I am willing to make that a gift to your family, from me Thank to you. your family, with a condition. Okay. You show up when you're supposed to show up, <laughs> and you so much as blink. You play one diva card, and your ass will be kicked to the curb before God gets the news. Okay? okay? But... You lean into that program 
and I will throw more resources at you than you even knew existed. Thank you. And we will embrace you, and you will come back out, girl, and you will not only get in the game, but you will get in their lives. Fair enough? Okay? All right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Girls, fair enough? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thanks. Fascinating, isn't it? Wow. Well, the good news is that this had a happy ending. And if and I actually dug a little deeper and into this story, and it turns out she did turn her life around, at least for the most part. At least uh, that's, that's what the latest video was. In fact, um, Heather continued talking about this uh, and her mother and the situation in her YouTube videos. Unfortunately, she also continued her, 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 her trajectory towards spiritualism towards believing that she was an alien and towards believing that she could have this spirit language that she could talk about. And this is all a result of her mother's actions and her not wanting to follow her mother. Check it out. I just want to reiterate that I'm not coming from a space where I come from a family that has been really effortless and easy and has always been healthy. I come from a dynamic that was extremely toxic and again challenging and traumatic on so many levels to where because I've done this healing now I feel called to share this and it has been such a huge thing in my life that has affected every area of myself again beyond what i thought was necessary before where because the relationships with my parents one of my parents in specific was so traumatic and toxic at one point i had to cut all contact with that parent where i literally did not talk to them at all where we had no communication and it was like we didn't even exist in each other's lives for multiple years in a row because it was so toxic and the cords the connections the relationship dynamics that were at the time the foundation were so distorted and needed so much healing i actually had to completely cut them and remove myself from them so that i could do my own healing now i didn't necessarily know that this is what this would initiate but upon doing this it forced me to have to activate my own divine parents my own divine mother my own divine father oh my goodness okay she was doing good for a little while there but she's uh she clearly what she's saying is i had to go through some healing because of what my mother did i had to do this thing inside me i had to find my spirituality and she found the wrong spirituality folks it's the i'm gonna boldly say this she found her wrong spirituality and she now thinks that she had to find the divine inside of her, inside of her. I mean, listen to those. It sounds very similar to saying, hey, I had to find uh, divinity, but that's divinity outside. That's what Christianity says. That's what the Bible says. Finding divinity inside yourself is the new age movement. Finding self and, and look into yourself or anything inside yourself as divine is downright Satanism. Within myself, to reparent myself, my inner child, to connect with and heal myself on a deep inner layer so that I could eventually, and I did not know this at the time, reconnect with my mom. Okay, I'm just gonna say it, it's with my mom. But again, if you've seen the episode of Dr. Phil where they show my traumatic childhood, then you probably already knew that. <laughs> this, 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 this section is funny to me because she comes out of character. Obviously, she's put in this whole I am divine, I am a new age person, and I talk like this when I'm talking on YouTube. And she comes out and says, okay, 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 yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> and she all of a sudden gets this, this normal voice about her as she starts talking about her terrible situation that happened. But yeah, there have also been other toxic dynamics in my family with my other family members as well, because I just apparently chose an incarnation where I was like, yeah, let's just go through a bunch of crazy shit so that we can learn like the most insane messages and just channel the medicine through and share it with everyone else in return. Yeah, that sounds fun. That's entertaining. Let's do it. Okay, did you see what she said? She said that she chose this. She's still putting the blame on herself through the religion that she's looking through this at. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities of darkness. She is not wrestling against herself. She did not choose her parents in a different life. There is no different life. This is the one you have, and this is all you got. There is no second chance. You do not have time to get right. This is it, folks. 
This is the time to get right with God. This is the time to learn about the spirituality that is so prevalent in the world that the biggest and hottest selling book in the world is the Bible and it's also the least read because we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities of darkness. Clearly, this is an absurd situation, but it could have all been prevented by stopping one drink, one drink of alcohol, and the butterfly effect occurred that caused someone to believe they are a, an alien, believe they can speak spirit language. Think of what you're doing to your children if you take that sip of alcohol. Think of how it affects everyone. Your children, when you do something, when you, it, that affects you, that causes you to call them up and say, hey, you know, I hate this, or, or your parents, or, or your, your direct relatives, or your boyfriend, or, your, or your, uh, your brother, your sister. Think of what you're doing to them. Think of how you're making them feel, because when you take this alcohol, this stuff, that the Bible says we should not take a part of, that is affecting more than just you. I'm Brad Burnham. And I have more than just a story to back this up, but experience. Join us next time on Strange Normal.